FM 94, The Dark. Jay-Z hanging out with you. And once again, it is time to learn about one of the bands we play here on these airwaves. On the phone right now, I'm talking with uh, Sean McCoy. And he's uh, the lead singer with the band Boba Flex. And the thing about Sean right now, I believe you're down in Georgia and getting ready to uh, head over to North Carolina tomorrow night to play a gig. And uh, first of all, how's the weather down in Georgia? Beautiful. I mean, I've been in a t-shirt all day. We're in Florida for the last few days. It was nice coming out of the Midwest. But now, uh, you know, in the next uh, two weeks, we'll end up back in the Northeast. So we'll be coming right back into the snow. <laughs> well, and exactly. Uh, George has been, it's been rough down there this year. They've had a couple snowstorms down there, and obviously they don't really know how to handle that too much, do they? No, they don't. They were, you know... They were confused and scared. <laughs> yeah, that's for sure. And now you guys have been on a little bit of tour here, and I know I've been following you via Facebook that and had a little uh, problems with the RV. You want to talk about that a little bit? Yeah, the turbo went out. We had, you know, uh, probably almost 20 days in a row. We were proud of it on the road, no days off. And, of course, disaster struck. Our turbo went out, spent two days in a hotel room, and uh, the third day we spent at Caterpillar, they kind of made a mistake and, did some work for free, and to save money on the hotel, we stayed at the actual uh, Caterpillar spot where they're working on it all night. So we ended up uh, making tacos and getting beer and partying in their parking lot all night, which wasn't that bad. Yeah, not a bad thing to do, right? Get an off night, right? Yeah, it was a great off night. <laughs> hey, let's talk about the history of the band, and how did this band all become? How did it start? I was in college, and uh, I was, I'm like 40 hours short of an advertising degree, my brother came to college, and I realized I didn't want to work for Pizza Hut or Hallmark for the rest of my life, uh, making up uh, corny commercials. So uh, we ditched college and started a band, and kind of went through some personnel changes, and we've got the current lineup we have now, minus one guy. Um, we got serious, got a record deal at TVT, and um, went on some big tours. They went bankrupt, went through legal hell for a few years, stuck with it, and uh, started our own label about four years ago, and this is the second album we put out on BFX Records. And it's all owned by us, and now we have a couple of investors. And it's going great. We have more money in our pockets than we ever did on a record label. Very cool. We'll talk about that album in just a moment. But uh, let's talk a little bit more about the history of the band and the name. The name Boba Flex, how did it come about? Well, originally, you know, we had a couple of names floating around, and uh, a guy we kicked out came up with it. and uh, We were both Star Wars geeks, and I'm a big Boba Fett fan. And... Uh, it was just a word. It was in the late '90s when it was cool to have a goofy pop culture name that didn't make much sense. <laughs> not, not so common now, <laughs> right? But uh, you know, that's it stuck with us, and we said, you know, we're not changing the name and got a name national with it. So basically, I, I'm a big comic nerd, Star Wars geek, and it's just an homage to one of my favorite characters, Boba Fett. Uh, is it has it gotten mispronounced a bunch? Oh, Boba Flex, Boba Flex, of course, Bo Flex. Unfortunately, Bo Flex came out. After we were making our stride, I was like, no! <laughs> but we, we stuck with the name, some fans said, you can't change the name, it's just how I know you guys, so I figure if uh, corn can make a lot of money, you know, basically being named after a vegetable, I figure we can, uh, you know, have a half sci-fi warrior, half workout machine name. <laughs> I hear you. I hear you. We're talking with Sean McCoy, he's uh, the lead singer of the band Boba Flex. Actually, you're the lead singer, but doesn't your brother also do some singing, too? Uh, my brother does lead vocals, and, uh, you know, our uh, bass player, Jared Mankin, he does a lot of vocals live. He's always backing up or doing his own lead, and he sings lead on several songs, too. I mean, not as many, but he, he's got his lead vocal moments, too. So, you know, we, we're big fans of Kiss and the Beatles and, and bands that had multiple vocalists, so there's no real big egos here. You know, we kind of, if you want to sing the song, go ahead if it's your song, and sometimes I'll write a song for myself and decide it's not right for me, and I'll, you know, ask one of the other guys to sing it. What's it like being in a band with your brother? We've been together so long. It's, it's you know, there's kind of the brotherly thing, but you know, we're business partners too, and we get along. And you know, we've had our spats, and we realize when we fight, we don't get anything done. So we kind of tread lightly with each other, and, <laughs> and uh, be honest. But we, at the same time, we were past the uh, step brother phase. You know, <laughs> we're punching each other and calling each other names and. And uh, always fighting. We're past that sibling rivalry thing now. Being in the band 10 years now, it's just like, how do we make money? And how do we get more fans? And how do we go on this tour? And, and how do we write better songs? So it's just always about the progression of the band. So that kind of keeps us. I mean, we occasionally have spats, but I'm talking like 
once every two years, we have a real big argument. We get along really great. <laughs> hey, you, you mentioned spats. You mentioned arguments. This will lead into my next question, and this uh, actually goes back with the uh, the McCoys and the Hatfields, and actually you have some ties to that. Am I correct on that? Absolutely, man. Uh, we're from West Virginia, and we're not too far from Tug River. Uh, our family migrated north a little bit. We're still in West Virginia, and, uh, you know, we're part of the family. It, sometimes it's tough, the lineage thing. Our great-grandfather was uh, uh, murdered at 21 for stealing a horse. Uh, he didn't even have a social. So we, it took a minute to piece it back, but we're definitely from the Tug River area and direct descendants of the McCoy and Hatfield feud. And, and uh, a lot of people ask if Hatfield's going you know, to have a problem. I'm like, you know, those TV shows that don't believe all that reality stuff. Any Hatfield comes to their show, usually tries to put us under with uh, whiskey. <laughs> no one's trying to shoot at us yet. Not yet. They always come and say, hey, I'm a Hatfield, and bam, it's shot time. We kind of, you know, shoot words back and forth and, and have a good time, man. What's it like to have some kind of history like that, actually? does it is it, a, is it a burden at all, or is it not? I mean, you know, you hear about it a lot. People want to know about it. I mean, I always tell people, you know, I like the series that uh, Kevin Cosner did, but, you know, they kind of fuse in three of the legends. There's multiple stories why the feud started. People always think that I've got, like, this, you know, the true story. And it's really a lot of hearsay. I mean, it's people's letters and rumors and, Legends back then, all they know is it's, you know, some people really died in this feud, and it got serious, and, uh, and you know, it's almost a point where, you know, the federal, the government had to step in, and the state had to step in, and and uh, there's other stuff that went on in West Virginia, like the coal mine wars, which uh, some of our family members were involved in, and that was a serious situation between the coal companies and, and Appalachians, and they really did call in the National Guard to stop that. That was the, the greatest uh, 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 state of insurrection other than the Civil War, that was the second, you know, worst situation. It almost blew up to that between mm-hmm. corporations and, and Appalachians. So don't mess with hillbillies. They'll all band together and get their shotguns and bite you. <laughs> <laughs> We're talking with Sean McCoy the, from the band Boba Flex. And, you know, maybe does some of your inspiration to music come from your history in the past? Or where do you get your inspiration to make these songs? Um, Everything from, you know, personal experiences in the band and, uh, uh, we try to do personal experiences or, you know, we're a big fan of Johnny Cash. So, you know, there are some songs like Buried Me, My Guns On, or old, old from the last album that are kind of fantasy based, a little influenced by comics. Um, so we like sometimes, you know, it's either a real thing we've been through or something you really want to talk about that's going on today. Or be, it could be like, you know, a boy named Sue, or it's just a, uh, it's kind of a ballad about somebody else or seeing the world through someone else's eyes. Talk about your new album, uh, which I believe came out uh, last September. Yes, uh, it uh, it's basically I don't know why uh, it's it's for a subject matter. It's one of the darkest records we ever wrote. I wouldn't necessarily necessarily say heavier. I mean, a few songs, but the subject matter for whatever reason, from "I'm Glad You're Dead" to to "Pretty Little Things," which is about a guy that stalks young girls on the internet. I mean, there's a lot of it's the darkest album we ever wrote, and. Uh, we just kind of can't. We're going to put an EP out. We just thought, you know, I don't want our fans to wait two years on five songs. So we just kind of got in a think tank, and uh, some of the songs were older that were supposed to be on Hell in the Heart, but it had 16 songs. That was enough. So we had a few leftovers that weren't really finished, and we just got got together and rehearsed in our room for about a few months. And and some of those are the best songs. Some of those songs are the singles that are on radio. You're hearing that, that we just got together and wrote from scratch, and just said, okay, let's start jamming. So. It was a really cohesive effort on this record, and uh, we're really happy with it. We're just hitting our stride. Things are happening faster uh, as far as recording and writing. You know, we got stumped a little bit, but everything just felt real natural, and and everybody knows everybody so well in the band. It just it just flowed real easy. I think we're hitting a, a good stride here. Yeah, and obviously, uh, did the song "Bad Man" really kind of put you finally on the map nationally? Yeah, I think Guns did, but we didn't really have, you know, the marketing money right. for it. You know, we realized we're going to have our own label. We really need some muscle. So we picked up an investor on this album, okay. and uh, Batman went top 40. And, uh, you know, as far as the Internet goes and the road, I mean, it's just so many expenses people don't realize as an independent band. you got to have a partner. So I went out and found a good friend of ours from the Midwest uh, who owns, you know, multiple businesses. guy knows how to make money, and... Uh, we talked to him about three months and said, hey, you know, be part of the team. And uh, it took uh, some talking and, 
and we went back and forth contracts, but uh, we've got the same budget that a major label band does. I mean, at least close. And we're spending the way we want to, but we made the deal and we made the percentages, so it's fair for us where we make money and a good bit of it as things go better. And it's it's looking really good right now. So, you know, right now labels are offering these things called 360 deals where they take the band's merch, the show, of course, all you know, most of the music. And there's really no money left for the band, even if they are successful. They're not making a lot of money. Um, don't let them fool you. I mean, especially the newer deals. Now, Nickelback, yeah, sure, but they probably have last of the old school deals. And those deals are going away. And, you know, labels are offering really crooked deals, to be honest. And we got offered one after a TVTO was surprised, and the numbers are so bad. We just, you know, I wanted the deal, but, uh, you know, I, I went to grade school and I could do the math. <laughs> I'm like, this doesn't work out for us right. very well. Yeah. And, and that's so, just... yeah, man, uh, that's, that's why I encourage a new band. I'm like, you know, record, tour, and, uh, you know, if you need marketing dollars, you know, start talking to people with money and partner up and make a fair deal and ha- hash it out. And, and uh, you can compete with the big boys, too. You don't have to get a sign your soul away. Obviously, you guys are on tour right now. Uh, you got any uh, big plans coming up at the uh, end of the year here for continuing touring? Well, I do, but there's a couple of them that aren't. I haven't signed a dotted line on, on the okay. board, so I can't say, but keep uh, keep your ear to the ground and uh, at the official BubbaFlex.com, and we will definitely announce it very soon. Hey, obviously, we're, we'll talk about your new single coming up here, too, and we'll play it for the, our fans listening out there and your fans, obviously. Uh, one thing I always like to ask bands, and this is a question that uh, sometimes stumps bands a little bit. It takes them a little time to think about, but all right, Boba Flex is playing on a triple bill, okay? Who are the other two bands that you would love to play with one night? They can be bands that are still in existence, bands that aren't here anymore. It could be individuals that are alive, dead, whatever. Who would those other two bands or individuals be that you'd well, like to... Well, the bands play with are one of my favorite bands is Royal Bliss and uh, Eve Adam, that's his band, and uh, Waylon, but we play with all those bands a lot. Right. You know, to play with them in a co-headline. But as far as our dream gig, geez, for me personally, uh, I would have to say uh, the original Guns N' Roses yep. and Motley Crue, or I would like to play with uh, Muse and... Uh, of course, the Jimi Hendrix experience. Like, it'd be tough between those four. Yeah, that would be I, In fact, I could go on all day about this. <laughs> oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah, and actually, you mentioned Royal Bliss. I did have a chance to talk with Neil Middleton about a couple months ago, and he had mentioned you guys, too. So, obviously, there must be a love-love there between you guys. Oh, yeah. And, uh, I look forward to playing with those guys. At the same time, I dread it because <laughs> uh, the parties get ridiculous, and everybody, you know, the bands are both pretty... Pretty, can get pretty wild, but when we get together, it's uh, it's Hangover City. That's what I was feel, told. I was told that. Yes, <laughs> I feel absolutely drained. Like I, you know, I'm coming down with pneumonia when we're done touring. Like, what did I do to my body? It's that bad. How I mean, t- we get drunk and wrestle on the bars like we're 13 years old. I mean, we have bouncers jump us one time. So we're knocking tables over. I just wasted. Uh, wrestling each other, knocking our own merch tables over in the bar, being completely uncivil. So people are like, "What is wrong?" And I met, we never do that unless we're royal bliss. Yeah, it is it the junior high. <laughs> what is it? I mean, how how tough is it now as you're getting older? I mean, you've been around this business for a while. How tough is it to be out on the road? It can get tough. I mean, the guys had a big party last night. I personally, uh, you know, for my vocals and stuff, the last couple tours, I've been trying to. Uh, tour sober, and you know, I usually break some point and uh, <laughs> completely ripped. But I'm trying to enjoy just uh, playing straight up and hanging out with fans without drinking. But we are known to drink a lot. But as I'm getting older, you know, I'm trying to work out in the morning and go for a jog, and uh, so I can keep doing this, you know, for another ten years <laughs> instead of my liver fall out my ear. <laughs> <laughs> Hey, we're talking with Sean McCoy from Bubble Flex, about ready to wrap things up. We're going to play your new song, I'm Glad You're Dead, too. Talk about that song a little bit and how'd that all come about. Well, uh, we had a fan a few years ago talk about, you know, he said, you know, I had a funeral for my father today. I was sort of, you know, I'm sorry to hear that. And he said, no, I'm glad he's dead. And he went to how he views his sister and mother and all this stuff. And uh, so that kind of stuck with us. And, uh, you know, we kind of writing the song and, End of the title, we thought about that, and I'm a big Batman fan, big comic geek, and the old uh, Jack Nicholson Joker, uh, there's a scene in the original Batman where he says, I'm glad you're dead, and it's kind of a, a statement I've heard, and it's a really old 30s song um, that's similar to I'm glad you're dead, it's like, 
I'm glad you died, or I'll be I'll be glad when you're dead. So it's kind of a theme from a joker to a fan to an old song that people have said no one really has the guts to say. I mean, when Osama bin Laden was, you know, uh, assassinated, how many people kind of sighed relief, like, thank God they got that no good, you know, whatever. And uh, in the same way, if there's a local sex offender that gets creamed in a car wreck, I'm sure people under their breath go, thank God he's gone. And a lot of people don't want to admit that, especially people who've had situations where a drunk driver or someone has abused their family member and they pass away or someone has hated a family member, a lot of celebrity to hear it. They, they, it's just like a subconscious thing that people don't want to admit. But I, I've heard this statement, I'm glad you're dead. And it's ugly, but it's there. And I think everybody can kind of connect with it. And, uh, you know, it's it's not your typical uh, radio song, that's for sure. <laughs> It's not inspirational, no. Nope. But uh, we thought it was a cool subject, and we want to kind of pay homage to the Joker and that fan. And he kind of spilled his guts out about you know his life and how it was almost a celebration of the party that his dad was dead. Well, it's always fun as a DJ trying to play the song, but actually sing the song before and just kind of lead it into something. So it's kind of cool. It's kind of a cool thing. So. Hey, absolutely. absolutely. Let's uh, wrap things up here, and I guess I want to figure out, uh, or I guess find out, how do we find more about Boba Flex? Uh, go to the official Um You can also search us on Instagram, um, Facebook, and Twitter. It's really to just type in Bubble Flex. We'll be right there. And uh, I'll have us to say something. We also have an online store on the official If we're not in your town, um, you can order T-shirts there. And, of course, uh, you know, most uh, FYEs uh, carry the CD. And if you don't get it there, um, you can order it at Amazon, iTunes, every possible downloading site. There is, uh, you can find it. Awesome, Sean, and uh, hopefully and most of the money goes to us. Yeah, that, that's the Flex Records. <laughs> that's the cool thing. It goes to you, not to uh, the the guy down the street, and then you don't see it, David. So that's the cool thing. Absolutely, man. So that's why we made it. So it, it's 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 been a work in progress, but we're finally seeing the tide turn, and it's looking good, man. Well, hopefully we get a chance to see Boba Flex coming up here in the next uh, six months to a year up here in Minnesota. Sound good? Sounds good, man. Absolutely, we are. Hey, thanks so much for joining me. And by the way, we're going to play your new song right now. Here it is. I'm glad you're dead. It's on the dark at FM 94.